On the morning of January 23rd, 1867, the citizens of New York and Brooklyn awoke to an extraordinary sight. During the night, the East River had frozen over solid, locking the ferries in ice, bringing traffic in the harbor to a standstill, and crippling commerce between the two cities for weeks. For years, people had been dreaming of a structure that could span the turbulent river, a gigantic bridge that would unite the two cities and free transportation from the tyranny of the weather. Now something, everyone agreed, had to be done. Before the ice had thawed that spring, the New York Bridge Company had been incorporated and charged with the task of finding someone capable of building such a structure. They built the bridge because they saw New York City running out of space. Manhattan Island was finite. There was just so much of it, and it was filling up fast. But Brooklyn, it seemed, could expand endlessly out onto Long Island. Therefore, the bridge was built not to get to New York, but to get to Brooklyn. And it was seen as a way of having the city expand into that open space of Brooklyn, because nobody had yet imagined a city growing upward instead of out. The very thing that made the bridge so crucial made it all but impossible to build. The East River was the busiest stretch of water in the world, filled with ferries, steamers, clipper ships, and launches. If there is to be a bridge, one skeptic wrote, it must take one grand flying leap from shore to shore over the masts of ships. There can be no piers or drawbridge. There must be only one great arch all the way across. There was probably only one man in the world who could build such a structure, an intense, enigmatic 61-year-old German-born engineer and inventor named John Augustus Roebling, who had already made a fortune pioneering the manufacture of wire rope. Now, with his son Washington, a former colonel in the Army Corps of Engineers, Roebling drew up plans for a structure far larger than anything ever before attempted. Its central span would be 1,600 feet long, half again as long as any bridge in existence, and its towers 275 feet tall, seven times higher than the four-story skyline of Manhattan. By the summer of 1869, work on the giant enterprise had begun. John Roebling himself was surveying the foundation for the Brooklyn Tower on the morning of June 28th, when a ferry rammed the pier he was standing on, crushing his right foot. Tetanus set in, then lockjaw, and after three weeks of agony, he died, leaving responsibility for the most ambitious engineering project of the 19th century on the shoulders of his 32-year-old son, Washington. In the end, it would prove far more difficult and take far longer than anyone could have imagined. Before it was over, the twin cities Washington Roebling hoped it would connect would have to descend into a maelstrom of political and financial chaos and rise again. <laughs> 